Hi everyone, you're watching WASD20. My name is Nate, and today you are here to join me to help me feed my addiction for character creation in D&D 5th edition. Uh, today I have my player's handbook, I've got a character sheet, I've got a bag of dice. Let's do it. Okay, so in my first two videos I created a fighter and a bard. Uh, so today we're going to be creating another one. Uh, this time I'm going to be a little less heavy on the rules. Uh, for beginners, if you're new to this, I would recommend going and watch my first two videos. Uh, those will give more detail on that sort of thing. Uh, but I am going to be using, just like I did last time, a fistful of dice's random D&D character generator for 5th edition. This is available on his website. I'll put the link down below. He's got a great channel and a great website. I recommend him. All right, so we're going to be rolling. I'm going to rule out dwarfs and gnomes because I've already made characters using that. I want a little variety. All right, you can't see that, but I got a two. That's a mountain dwarf, so I'm going to try again. Five that time. Rock gnome, okay. Eleven, a human, okay. Third time's a charm. So, race is going to be human. Next up, background. 15. I'm a sailor. All right, next we have my d12 for class. I've already done bard and fighter, so I'm going to rule those out. 9. Rogue. Perfect. Level 1. All right. Without further ado, let's get going. So, I have my player's handbook, as I've mentioned before, I think the basic rules is also a great resource if you don't have the player's handbook. The basic rules is going to give you all that you need to create a human and a rogue, I believe. I believe they're both in there. Alright, so the natural place to start is on page 11 of the player's handbook here. And uh, so the first step, choose a race, choose a class. So we'll go in this order even though we've already chosen these things. First off, choosing a race. So we are human. Skip ahead, that's on page 29. Um, and you can read all about humans, which I recommend doing. <clears throat> Some very nice art here in the player's handbook. And we are going to uh, be able to pick kind of a, a further nationality. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And uh, there are nine of these different kind of nationalities within human. I'm going to be rolling a d10 and hoping I don't get a 10. 8. That gives me Tetherian. I'm just going to write that down there. I'm going to be able to refer to that on page 31 if I need a little more info about who I am and how to roleplay this character um, and it might help me decide some things. All right. It says here, Tetherians primarily use Chandothan names. So if we look at the Chandothan names, we can see some examples of names. I am going to be a male. I like to play a male usually. And we'll just pick one of these. Malark. I like that. Sounds like Malarkey. Malark. And are there family names as well? Surnames. Amblecrown, Buckman. Um, Dundragon. Evenwood, Greycastle. Tallstag. We're going to go with Tallstag. All right, Malark Tallstag. Doesn't sound very roguish, but oh well. All right, next up, the important part for our stats is here on the bottom of page 31, the human traits. So it says here, uh, humans get ability score increase of one. Uh, they reach adulthood in their late teens. Alignment can be whatever I want. I'll decide that later. Uh, size, we'll worry about later. Speed, I will write that down. Base walking speed is... 30 feet, and uh, languages, you can speak, read, and write common, and one extra language of your choice. So I'm going to choose um, human, and I'm going to go with a, a monster language. Uh, we'll go with orcish. All right. Our next step is to read more about our class, rogue. So we'll go to the uh, chapter on classes and find the page for Rogue here. Rogue. All right. So Rogue, awesome picture here, 
is on page 94. All right. And one of the more important things is this chart right here. You can read all about rogue. Rogues are kind of masters of the shadows. They are, um, you know, the closest thing to assassins without having the assassin class. They are thieves often and, and can, you know, are skilled burglars. Um, often they are uh, very stealthy and dexterous. Okay. So uh, some of the basics here that I'm going to want to write down. At first level, my proficiency bonus is plus two. I get sneak attack, 1d6. 1d6. So I'm going to write that in features and traits. Okay, that's good for now. Class features. Obviously, hit dice is important. 1d8. Uh, hit points at first level, eight plus your constitution modifier. We'll roll for that soon. Hit points at higher levels, 1d8 or 5. Let's see, constitution mark. Okay, proficiencies. Light armor. Uh, simple weapons. Long swords, rapiers, short swords. Okay, so I've got my proficiencies there. It says for saving throws. Um, I am proficient in dexterity and intelligence saving throws. Dexterity and intelligence saving throws. And uh, skills, choose four from acrobatics, athletics, deception. Uh, as usual, I'm going to wait till I get my background to decide, uh, till I look at my background to see uh, what, I, what I choose for skills because some of the backgrounds include proficiencies and skills. All right, so I'll come back to that. I'll write here, page 95. So, we do get to pick a couple other things at first level. We get an expertise. So let's look at the expertise. At first level, choose two of your skill proficiencies or one of your skill proficiencies and your proficiency with thieves tools. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of the chosen proficiencies. At sixth level, you can choose two or more of your proficiencies and skills to gain this benefit. Okay, so first level. Okay, so once again, uh, I'm going to have to come back to this once I get my background. So, because I haven't seen what those skills are going to be yet. But basically, I'll be able to double my proficiency on two of my skills, which is really nice. So, I'll just remember that. Expertise. All right. Okay, so next, sneak attack. Let's read a little about this. Uh, beginning at first level, you know how to strike subtly and exploit a foe's distraction. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. So there are certain situations you can read about, I think, in the combat section under which you have advantage on an attack roll. And um, I get to add an extra 1d6 damage. Uh, one of the keys is I, I have to be using a finesse or a ranged weapon. Uh, so I'm probably going to select a rapier, and uh, that's, which is a finesse weapon. Uh, you don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within five feet of it. That enemy is isn't incapacitated, and you don't have a disadvantage on the attack roll. The amount of extra damage increases as you gain levels. Okay, so sneak attack 1d6 um, is what I need to know for now, and that is what I get to uh, add to the damage. Okay, not to the attack. So, um, Thieves Can't is another thing I should read about. During your uh, rogue training, you learn Thieves Can't, a secret mix of dialect, dialect, jargon, and code that allows you to hide messages in seemingly normal conversation. Only another creature that knows Thieves Can't can understand such messages. Uh, it takes four times longer to convey such a message than it does to speak <coughs> the same idea plainly. Thieves Can't. Step three, uh, determining ability scores. So this is the fun part. I love it. All right, I'm gonna be using 4d6, drop the lowest. And I will write these down on a scrap piece of paper here. Okay, so six, 12 for our first one. Okay, so those are my ability scores, not bad. It hurts a little, but other than that, actually quite good. 
Uh, because I'm not super experienced, I generally like to follow their, uh, their tips for the quick build here in terms of where I allocate my, uh, my ability scores. So it says here that uh, first dexterity should be your highest. Make intelligence your next highest if you want to excel at investigation or plan to take up the arcane trickster archetype. Choose charisma instead if you plan to emphasize deception and social interaction. Second, choose the charlatan background. Okay, uh, I already rolled for background, and I, I do like to roll randomly for that and make it a little bit more unique. Um, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to go for charisma as my next highest. So I'm human. Remember, I get to add one to every one of these uh, ability scores. So first off, dexterity is going to be a 16 plus one is 17. My 14, I'm going to put on charisma. Uh, and if I add one, that's a 15. All right. Uh, next up, we've got our 12 for strength, plus 1 is 13. We've got uh, constitution, I'm going to go with, uh, we'll go with 10, plus 1 is 11. Intelligence, 12 plus 1, 13. And wisdom will be my lowest. Nine. I keep forgetting to add one. Okay. Now to calculate my ability score modifiers, I turn to page 13 and I see this handy dandy little chart. Strength is 13, so that's plus one. Do I have any others? Yeah, plus one. And I think that's it. 10 and 11 are, uh, I'm sorry, 17. Let's go in order. 17 is going to be plus three. 11 is going to be plus zero and nine is going to be minus one. All right, so those are my ability scores and modifiers. Uh, we now know, because of my ability scores, we know my initiative is plus three. Uh, my hit points are eight plus my constitution modifier, so eight hit points, not too great. And we can begin to fill in some of this stuff, but let's finish up with the skills. I think that the next section is describing our character, and we finally get to get a little more info about our background, which in this case was Sailor. So let's go back to that section on backgrounds. And that, I believe, is Chapter 4. Personality and background. So, you got a name, I have a sex. Uh, height and weight, I'm not going to worry about. I can figure that out later if I feel like it. Alignment, I'll decide on that a little later as well. I like to usually look at my background a little more and then decide alignment. All right, the sailor background is on page 139. Just going to make a note of that here. And let's read a little bit about this. You sailed on a seagoing vessel for years. Yada, yada, yada. Skill proficiencies, athletics and perception, both of which I like. Especially perception. I just love having a character with good perception. Tool proficiencies. Navigators, tools, and vehicles. Water. Equipment. So uh, some of these things would come in handy, and I would want to write them in my equipment section. In the interest of time, I'll be doing that later. A belaying pin, which is a club. 50 feet of silk rope. Uh, a lucky charm, such as rabbit or foot or small stone with a hole in the center. Or you may roll for a random trinket on the trinkets table. Yay, trinkets! A set of common clothes and a belt pouch containing 10 gold pieces. So again, I'd want to record that on my equipment section, but I'll be doing that later. Other stuff here. Uh, when you need to, you can secure free passage on a sailing ship for yourself and your adventuring companions. You might sail on the ship you served on or another ship you have good relations with, perhaps one, one captained by a former crewmate, because you're calling it a favor. You can't be certain of schedule or route that will uh, meet your every need. Your dungeon master will determine how long, it, uh, how long it takes to get where you need to go. In return for your free passage, you and your companions are expected to assist the crew during the voyage. All right, pretty cool. Suggested characteristics. I'm going to roll for these. So, personality trait with a d8. Got a 7. My language is as foul as an out as an Ochio nest, whatever that is, all right. Uh, D6 for ideal. 
Five, people. I'm committed to my crewmates, not to ideals. D6, bond. Six, ruthless pirates murdered my captain and crewmates, plundered our ship, and left me to die. Vengeance will be mine. And lastly, my flaw. One, I follow orders even if, they, even if I think they are wrong. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write these down in my section, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've recorded those things here. I kind of abbreviated, but um, th those are really nice. I, th I like the sailor background, and I think it'll really help me roleplay this character well. Uh, just a note, there is this variant sailor background of, of pirate and bad reputation, which you can read about here on page 139, uh, to kind of add an interesting twist to your character as well. Actually, I think I'm going to uh, determine my other skills now, uh, and so I'll go back to page 95 first before I go to chapter 5 to choose my equipment. So, skills. Choose from uh, acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Alright, let's see. What do I want here? I really like acrobatics. Uh, that's super useful in my experience. And I'm going to go with uh, persuasion and uh, stealth. So, persuasion and stealth as well. And then I've got one more, and I think I'm going to go with uh, Deception, make use of that Charisma. Oh, I just realized I forgot my uh, Charisma modifier, but I leave uh, at a 15, that would be a plus 2. Next, uh, we have to remember that we have Expertise, so at first level, choose two of your skill proficiencies, or one of your skill proficiencies and your proficiency with these tools. I'm going to go with two of my skill proficiencies that basically I get to double my proficiency bonus with. So my proficiency bonus is plus two. And the two that I'd like to do that with, I think I'm going to go with persuasion and acrobatics. Those are two that I really like. So persuasion, uh, my charisma modifier is plus two. And then my proficiency bonus doubled is plus four. So that's a total of plus six. And then acrobatics. The same, uh, no, dexterity modifier is plus three, plus four, because I get to double that, makes it plus seven. All right, so some super high skills, and that's one of the nice things about the rogue, is that they have more skills. They're just generally more skilled. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of this, I'll stop the video, and uh, see you in a second. Okay, so now I've got all my skills uh, recorded, my modifiers there, so I know what I get and my bonuses. Uh, I'm going to be now selecting equipment. That's the next step. Chapter 5 is all about equipment. This is on page 143 of the Player's Handbook. And I like to roll for my uh, gold here. So for Rogue, I get 4d4 times 10 gold pieces. All right, so here we go. Wow, pretty good. So there's 4, 8... Plus 6 is 14. All right. So I'm just going to record that down here. 140 gold. That's really good for a rogue. All right. Well, I'm going to do some shopping, and then I'll come back and explain what I purchased. Okay, so I've selected some equipment here. Um, I picked, actually, scratch the studded, I picked leather armor. Uh, I have two daggers. Um, which can be thrown or used in melee. I have a hand crossbow, which was kind of my big purchase, 75. And you could definitely argue that's not worth it, but I just uh, really like to have peace of mind so I don't feel trapped in cases where I really need a ranged weapon. And I've got a rapier and an explorer's pack, which has some of the basics, bedroll, backpack, etc. Um, so that is going to do it for me. I think you could, you could definitely make a case that a thieves, uh, thieves' tools would have been good. Um, those are 25 gold, so that was you know close competition. The crossbow, though, you know, I would have had to get rid of the crossbow, and I, I really do like the idea of having that hand crossbow. So another thing I realized as I was doing uh, calculating my damage here is you know, I'm not using this uh, strength of 13 at all. It probably would have been wise. I would say it definitely would have been wise for me just to uh, you know, maybe switch my constitution and my strength. Uh, I really don't need that strength. You know, the only thing I'm, I'm using it for, because this is a finesse weapon, and this is a ranged weapon, both based on dex. Um, 
the only thing I would need it for really is like an athletics check or uh, you know a few other things but uh, for the most part uh, I don't really need that so I'm not going to go back and change it now but if I were doing it again um, note that strength not so important if you're using a finesse weapon and a ranged weapon. Uh, passive wisdom I will fill out and that's just the ability that you have to to notice things and so my perception is plus one uh, so I think I get to add um, 10 plus 1, which is 11. Uh, I think this pretty much does it for my creation of a rogue. Uh, this is Malark Talstag. Oh, alignment, I didn't do that, but I've decided that he is going to be chaotic neutral, which I think is just a wonderful alignment for a rogue. So, uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Feel free to leave some comments. I welcome your feedback, and uh, thank you very much for watching. More classes coming soon, and as I continue to Feed my addiction for creating characters in D&D &D 5th edition. Everybody, thanks for watching and take care.